Good day everybody, this is Primus Infant here, and in this and this will be part one of a new series I'm commencing on a Civilization 6 for beginners. I've seen plenty of comments on Reddit about how plenty of beginners on Civ 6 fail to win at even the lower difficulties. This is intended for beginners and I will show you how to win with the most basic difficulties. This will be part one of the series filled with tips and tricks. If this video gets enough views, I'll actually continue the series. Anyway, let's get right into it. So first, you're going to want to create a game. Now, this is very important. You can pick your game difficulty here. If you're interested in more for challenge, you, you can crank it all the way up to deity. If it's your first game and you want to play in sandbox mode, you crank it to settler. If you want it to be easy enough that you're guaranteed to win, but not so easy that it feels like sandbox, then you click the default difficulty, Prince. Now, let's talk about leaders. Almost all of the leaders are trash except for a few good leaders. Examples of good leaders are Montezuma, Gilgamesh, I guess Far Frederick Barbarossa is a decent-ish leader due to his high production base. Uh, who else is a good leader? Teddy Roosevelt and Tom and Tom Rivers are also good leaders. Trajan is a decent-ish leader, but yeah, really we're gonna be sticking to Montezuma because he's by far the best leader in the whole game. The reason he's the best leader is because as he's trying to accumulate more luxuries, his military units get way more combat strength, and once you get all 16 luxuries, your military units feel broken. Anyway, we're going to be playing on continents, that's a standard map size, and I recommend a small map for your first game so that there are only 5 other ships that you have to step on. Pick standard game speed. Anyway, let's get right in. And now that it's finished, let's get right into the game. So first, you'll you'll probably notice right off the bat that you're that you start with a settler and a warrior. Now I know there are some of you that like to move your settler around, but we can't afford to waste time. Uh, I'm not sure if this position actually has fresh water. So normally, if you get a position with fresh water, you shouldn't have to worry too much. But if you're not lucky enough to settle in the place that is fresh water, you should probably use your warrior to scout out the nearby landscape. Anyway, once you're in a decent enough position, usually just take a position recommended by the, the map, and you can find your first city. Early on the game, you want to focus on having a high production base, but before you do that, you want your city to grow. So we're not going to be able to get our first items for quite some time now, well, our first unit, so let's just get a scout. It'll it'll take longer than normal to train up, but we're more most interested in growing early in the game. Next on our list, we're going to be interested in making our first beeline and we're going to be going right for pottery so that we can get a granary. Again, it's very consistent in the early game. Let me explain city growth. If you, for every citizen you have in your city requires two food to feed. That means that logically early in the game, it's going to be most, you're, you're going to be able to grow very quickly. And it's important, and growth is more important than production because after all, you'll get more production and as you have more people. So it's more important to grow than have production at the very beginning of the game. Obviously, this is all this is all tossed on its head later in the game. But nonetheless, you want to get a high production base as soon in the game as you can, so that you can start training up those units quick. It might also be worth your time to look for some tribal villages. You're gonna want to scout out in every direction right off the bat to try to find the next major civilization so you can step on their coats and otherwise crush their leader in the field of battle. The crappy news is that the barbarians found my camp, so now I'm gonna have to build a good old fashioned eagle warrior and teach them who's boss. If the barbarians find you and you're not able to fend them off, then they're going to rush at you from every angle and attempt to, and attempt to kill you. Luckily, right off the bat, you'll get the military policy discipline, which really helps. Urban planning gives you more production in all of your cities, which isn't bad. Next on our list should probably be an animal husbandry. This is so that we can get bonus resources from five farms. Then we're gonna want to beeline. Next on our list, we want to beeline craftsmanship. Again, this will allow us to build more military units early in the game, and more military units means that we'll be able to stomp on the other soon that we find on our continent.
Rather than actually fighting hard, we're gonna wait for our warrior before we go and stomp on the other ship's tokens. We're gonna keep on exploring in the hopes of meeting another novel. A civilization. If we can do that, then we'll be able to again stomp on their tokens. But before they're gonna they're gonna be coming at our city hard and fast. But luckily we don't have very many improvements so that we don't really have anything to lose. But again, it's all about finding the other major civilization. It's good to see that we found Cleopatra, but she's too far away. Let's exchange info on our capitals. Okay, she's all the way down here, which means we won't really get to slicing and dicing with her until later in the game. So for now, we'll need to explore the nearby city states. I guess I could send a trader to her, which you use to establish roads. But before I do that, we should probably get money. It's a good tag. Next on our list of things to do would probably be to get a build. We won't be able to stomp on Cleopatra's toes until later in the game. Uh, she sent us a delegation, which is nice to her. But, and it's a free 25 gold, and she already knows where our capital is, so, I, so I'm fine accepting her delegation. As you can see, the barbarians are going to rush me hard and fast. And since I have no warriors, they'll attempt to erase me from existence. But, I, as I train up my first warrior, I'll be able to intimidate the barbarians. Next, I'm gonna swap out discipline for a, a gog, or a gog, whatever you want to call it, just so I can get more warriors. And getting more warriors means I can finally beat up these barbarians, erasing them from existence in a few, in a few point attacks. But because I would build a greenery or a monument, but because the barbarians are an immediate threat, I'm going to go to slicing and dicing. I'm gonna move my warrior back into the capital and fortify it just so the barbarians have a bit more difficulty. And yeah, there's something called terrain, and if you have your people in unfavorable terrain, then you'll quickly get killed. Next, we're gonna want to research the wheel. The wheel. It's a pretty natural thing to research this early in the game. We're also going to want to search if there's another civilization close to us. If there is another civilization close to us, we'll be able to beat them up, taking all their resources and slaughtering them. We would establish a second city, but again, the barbarians are, are ever more imminent. We're not exactly standing at the top of domination right but once we, but once we, we take out Egypt, that'll change significantly. Now that I have two warriors to defend myself, I can probably finally end this barbarian conflict. In order to act properly end the barbarian conflict, I need to go rush their camp. While I'm at it, I'd also, I'm also going to make a nice little declaration of friendship to Cleopatra. Little does she know that in just a few turns, most of the good pantheons got this game. But we need to get extra rotation and classical era military units. Which is amazing because that's exactly what we need if we want to slice dice and shake up Cleopatra. Hey, more barbarians to kill. Barbarian camps also give us gold, which we can use. This gold allows us to maintain expensive units as well as, as purchase new units. However, spending gold to buy units can be a lot easier than, use, than creating them normally using production. However, it's very expensive in terms of gold, so I don't like to do it unless it's absolutely necessary. Tribal villages are great, they usually give us free units. But while we're on the subject, building farms in the right locations can quickly allow us to create more food for our city, which is very important early in the game. Because without food, we won't be able to grow into a more prosperous and settled. We're also going to want to beeline early on. While you're once. As you prepare to clear out the barbarians, you're going to want to rush their camp. Whether or not you take out the barbarians camp, well, could and usually will mean the difference between life and death. 
perfectly. Obtaining the luxury resources is especially helpful. It makes your cities more productive. And since I'm Montezuma, I get bonuses in combat for every luxury resource I have. Building a, qu a quarry will not only trigger a Eureka for masonry, but will also give me a free lug a luxury resource, which will be incredibly useful in rushing for a camp. If you haven't already noticed, there's a recurring theme. Take out the barbarians. That's because until I take out the barbarian king, there will be a nuisance. And they will not be a good nuisance. They will be the kind of nuisance that's very, well, let's just say annoying. After all, that's exactly what a nuisance is. But, but nonetheless, we're going to quickly use our gold to purchase a new monument so it can move through the civic tree a lot faster. Now that we've established our good little foundation, we're going to want to go for a water. Then we'll try to settle our second city in a suitable location. And we'll also try to erase these barbarians from existence. They've been very annoying. Now that we've taken out the barbarians, we're going to move our units back to our capital. Pretty soon we're going to be strong so that we can quickly get our turn out the settlers from Tenochtitlan, our capital city of the Aztec Empire. Now we've found Hero Pedrado. This guy is an expert at the seams. However, he's not very he's not a strong player. Or he gets a chance to fight us on his home turf. He already doesn't like us. He, probably because we don't have a navy. He is a Viking. He loves the navy. However, we don't have a navy. So he, So we are directly are in direct combat with each other because we both, he likes navies and I don't. So we're going to fight each other until only one of us stands. After all, he is a lot closer to me than Cleopatra. So I'm going to team up with Cleopatra and old fashioned double teaming with him, drag him to the ground, and eliminate him from existence. Cleopatra is willing to pay me a lot of money for a joint. Some money she's also willing to pay me simply to have open borders. But hey, I'm not gonna complain. And yeah, I got a bit of a poor start because the other sieves are too far away from my early game unit to be very useful. But nonetheless, Tenochtitlan is going to get its a watermill. Now that I've gotten Tenochtitlan to a good starting position where it's producing me a lot of funds, I could, should consider expanding elsewhere. In order to do this, I'm gonna need a settler. Sometimes I just like to open the training menu so I can see how, whether or not they've established extra cities. You always want to have the most cities, especially when you're on the lower difficulties and they don't get a bonus. On the higher difficulties, the AIs get massive bonuses. Kind, hence, hence the common meme you'll see on Reddit, where Civ 6, UK, and the AI wins. We're just gonna quickly farm up some more so we can get so we can get a joint war going with Cleo. Uh let's see. Hey, if I give you this luxury resource, are you willing to No, that's all you're willing to give. Okay, no deal. But nonetheless, Tenno Chitlin is gonna grow fast. And the barbarians are I swear these guys are so but I'm going to kick them out using brute force. Ah, oh, they pillage my city, stupid barbarians. So to punish the barbarians for their crimes, I will slaughter them. And no, it's not counterproductive to kill off the barbarians. I just remember that they're the ones who started the conflict therefore I don't feel bad. So let's get masonry up and running. The barbarians like to use hit and run tactics, so I'm gonna go have to chase them down. And let's get political philosophy. While I'm chasing down the barbarians to our camp, 
my settlers want to be training on. This will allow my city to flourish. Because as I explained to two cities, the barbarians lost to fight. Anyhow, I'm going to need to expand out the two cities, but I don't want my settler to get captured by those darn barbarians. So I'm going to have to kill them beforehand to ensure that my settler doesn't get captured. The barbarians don't fight honorably if they attack me from both angles, preventing me from eliminating either one of them. In previous civilization games, the barbarians were incredibly stupid and would spend their time wandering around the map aimlessly. But for some reason, in between Civilization 5 and 6, the barbarians studied up on Sun Tzu's The Art of War, and now all of a sudden they're tactical military generals that can kick your. But extremely quickly. Unfortunately for the barbarians, I now have a second city. Sure, it's not settled in fresh water, but I'm going to quickly fix that by adding in a granary, which, which should give me some extra housing. But rather than building the granary myself, like most people do, I'm instead going to try to find I'm instead going to build a builder and use gold to purchase the granary I need to be successful. It's going to be detrimental to my economy, but I'm going to fight you. For some reason, Cleopatra will give up her entire nation's GDP just to see me fight Harold Pedrada. Hey, we're fighting a joint war against Harold Pedrada. Well, to be honest, mostly Cleopatra is. I'm not doing any of it. I'm just sitting here chilling, letting her do all the real fighting while I pocket her entire nation's GDP. Hey, that's a free monument. It should give me a nice little cultural boost. But, and I should be able to recover what I need to build up a nice little greenery. Sure, my city is settled in an awful location. But once I get an aqueduct, that'll all change because it'll be like I have fresh water. Honestly, gonna be good. It would be nice to go for autocracy at this point, but oligarchy is the way to go. Sure, we only get one military policy, but we get extra combat strength, which of course is amazing. We can also get some free great general points by getting strategies. And you gotta know that charismatic leader will allow us to pick up those envoys even faster. Drum and poetry are yes, not bad. And we're gonna maneuver our troops back up so that we can slaughter those barbarians. If you can't tell, I really, really don't like barbarians. They make early progress so annoying. If you want, you can go to settings and turn them off to make your game like sandbox mode. His two warriors are going to be rushing my way, but due to my advantage in combat strength, they won't really be able to do significant damage. Nice to see that I found Zarp here. He also is on my continent. Sweet, that means I get to kill even more people. How do you like? Okay, you're not one. Uh, let's make it easier. It's GD. Uh, you're gonna give me your entire nation GDP for a quick level deal. This deal more equitable. Okay, never mind. I'm going to sacrifice the long term growth of my nation for short term. Let's see, how much are you willing to give me? Uh, are you willing to give me 50? 30? Okay, you're not even willing to give me 40 points. I'd be paying you twice as much back in interest. Ian, Peter, and I are also going to be friends. Your delegation is most welcome. Sweet. Now he's just going to be lining our pockets with funds. Pretty soon we're going to end up barbarian conflict and eliminate the other them from existence. We now unlocked astrology. Cool. Let's go for archery. I'm trying to get, make the early game bonus that, that my civilization gets relevant as long as possible. I'm funneling all my troops in 
all corners of the globe, all to stop the other, the barbarians from pillaging my well-developed lands. I'm not going to purchase a granary, which should quickly improve the quality of life for my citizens. Now that I have enough warriors, I'm going to try to end the barbarians once and for all. With the combat strength advantage that I have, the barbarians should stand little to no chance against me. But I'm still going to keep on mass producing those sweet sweet warriors to keep the barbarians at bay. Hey, now I have battle. Now my warriors are even more perfect compared to the barbarians. Part of the game is about rushing the barbarians as you want. If I rush the barbarians one, with one soldier at a time, then they'll quickly beat me back. However, if I rush with multiple warriors at the same time, then I'll quickly overwhelm the barbarians and sack their camp. Now that I have more than enough units to take out the barbarians, I'm, I'm going to quickly build a trade because trading between my two cities provides a bunch of benefits for both cities. Frankly, there's no real reason not to use traders. They literally provide free benefits for your cities. Always welcome. And now that we've reached the point where we have two cities, a solid foundation, and good relationships with two of the other civs on our continent. That is going to be part one of Civ 6 for Beginners. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.